Thank you. Thank you. Let's give them another hand. Thank you. <laughs> Gifted. Thank you. Well, you know what I'd like to do? Those who want to kneel with me, you may. Otherwise, just bow your head. As we open your word, O oh Lord, we do so with a consciousness that you have deemed it necessary to speak to us. Thank you, Lord. In words we can understand. We have the Bible, the Word of God. And those of us who read it have discovered that in time, it gets deeper and sweeter. Today, as we look into its pages, please say a word. We might have come distracted. We may have no interest at all in the sermon. But this is your time. Reach into us, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. We've been dealing with this book of Genesis. By the way, Genesis is the first book in the Bible. It's an amazing book. We, we, we've made the observation that in Genesis, the human race cries. In Revelation, God wipes away the tears. I, I like that. It gives the Bible a composite whole. And so we've said that you cannot preach Genesis without preaching Revelation. What Genesis starts, Revelation ends. What Genesis creates, the Revelation recreates. Behold, we read the text, didn't we? Revelation 21, 5, I make all things new. Didn't he say it? Well, I read it. If you didn't, it's right there. Behold, I make all things new. But then we also found out from studying Genesis that the first concrete teaching of Scripture is found in Genesis 1 and verse 1. In the beginning. Say it with me. You got it by now. In the beginning, what did God do? Created the heavens and the earth. And we made the point that the first four words of the Bible, in the beginning, God, in the beginning, yeah, four, four words. God, that God announces the most important doctrine in Scripture, which is that He exists. That was a very pitiful response, so I'll help you out. Amen. Amen. Somebody in charge of this mess. Amen. God exists. So I'll say what I'm, you know, it's kind of rough and it looks like nothing is working out. I'm reminded that the God who created it all exists. And he's got, he's got the whole, you know, the, the old folks saying he's got the whole world, how? In his hands. Yeah, we like that song. Kind of make you pat your foot. Yeah. So, so, so here we are. Here we are. And, 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 and we've learned as we've gone further that, 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 that God also creates. And we learned that not only does he create, but he is continuing to create. He he is creating and he's sustaining and he's restoring. Do you like that thought? Yeah, that's a good thought. He 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 created, but because but because it, we're we're all we're all messed up. And and you know some of y'all had a rough week this week, but you got through it, didn't you? Because God not only creates, he sustains, he holds you up. Just when you think you have no more strength, God is lifting you. But he restores. Because sometimes during the week, don't tell anybody. We mess up. 
Don't we mess up? Why are you all sitting there so pious? We mess up. We mess up. Good mess up. What does God do? He restores. He restores. We talked about his great grace, didn't we? His marvelous grace where God covers your stuff. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So we, 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 we talked about that. We talked about that. And then, and then we got into these five questions in Genesis 3. I've been preaching a month and a half. I'm still in Genesis 3. <laughs> So you know I'm not going to finish before I leave, don't you? Forgive me now. Forgive me now. Yeah. Five questions. I'm going to finish that today. Five questions. Genesis 3. Uh, gentlemen, help me out now. Put those, put those first two texts up there on the screen. Uh, Genesis 2, 15 through 17. <laughs> Come on, read. Then the Lord God. I need more folks reading. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. Next verse. And the Lord God commanded the saying of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Now, think about all the trees in that garden. A lot of trees. Every tree that is there for food you can eat. He gave them every tree but. <laughs> Next verse. Come on. Stop. See, that word, but's a powerful word. It means, it means I'm changing my thought. All these trees you've got, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not what? For in the day that... Sounds pretty clear to me. No big words in there. Isn't that clear? You got all these trees. You know, it's funny how life is and how we are in life. We can have all kind of stuff, and then we can see something somebody's got we don't have. Am, am I telling the truth? Yeah, it happens to us. And you've got a nice car, nice house, and then somebody drives on one of those new electric things. And all of a sudden, your gas burning car does not seem. And you know, we don't, we don't, we never, oh, excuse me, we never seem to have enough. We never seem to have enough. They got all the trees, all the trees. Eat this one. <laughs> Why would you even go near it? Makes no sense. Thank you, I say. Makes no sense. So. Chapter 3, verse 1. Let's read chapter 3, verse 1. Come on. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that serpent, that's the devil. The devil reads the Bible. <laughs> See him quoting it? He's quoting it. He's quoting exactly what, see, you think, so you can't mess with that dude. He knows the Bible better than you. He's 6,000 years old at least. Maybe older, well, older than that. And he's quoting the Bible to her. So if the guy who's trying to get you knows the Bible, what do you think you ought to know? Say it, say it, the Bible. Okay, we got that point across. All right, so, and he said to the woman, now, next verse, next verse. I didn't give you the next verse, but you can find it. Come on, come on, guys. Next verse, next verse. Okay, and the woman said, we may eat of the fruit. Yeah, there we go. Okay, come on. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. Keep on, keep on, next verse. But of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, she also knows the Bible. Now, the pastor's making a point. Who quotes the Bible first? The devil. <laughs> and then she quotes it. So they both know the Bible. They both know the Word of God. They both know the Word of God. Now, if you actually check them out, 
He twists the text, and she twists the text. He twists the text to make the point he wants to make, and she twists the text because she's really upset that God has denied her anything. God, no way. She, she, she hits back. We, 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 we may eat the fruit of the trees in the garden. We can do something. But if the tree, fruit of the tree was in the midst of the garden, God has said, we can't eat of it. And I see her tighten her lips. Can't eat of it. Can't touch it. Yes, we die. You know how we are. Can't dance, can't smoke, can't drink, can't go to the... I remember saying that junk to my dad, you know. I was weird, old-fashioned, 70 had been his father. Dad did not play. This is the truth. <laughs> I used to hate that word, the truth. This is the truth. Follow the truth. I started listening to all the things they can't do. My dad was a cool dude. Wasn't intimidated by this young idiot. So he said to me when I got done, he said, did you leave anything out? Then he said, but you can eat at my table, and you can sleep in my bed, and you got my roof over your head. Do you think I got the message? Yeah. What you can do is what you ought to be thankful for. <laughs> there are things that the Lord limits because he's smarter than you. Okay, I'll try them over here. There are things that you can't do that God says because he's smarter than you. And that's hard to accept because we've got all these degrees, doctorates, masters, BAs, BSs. Mm. Okay. So, 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 so my, 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 my point is, my point is, don't let, don't let them help me, Jesus. Don't let that stuff get in your head. Yeah, don't let that stuff get in your head. You ain't that smart, brother. There's a God who created, made the tree, made you, made your gut. Just the thing, y'all got to help me with this thing here. Come on, I say, you're my buddy, man. Scoot it forward, scoot it forward. All the way up, 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 all the past, over that hump, over that hump, over that hump. No, go, go further, up close, closer. Do not, that's the problem. Do not, okay, don't worry about it. So, 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 so God, God is watching this whole scene. Now, I pointed out in the other sermon, the first question ever asked a human being was asked by the devil. Don't forget that. And his first question was to cause you to question the Word of God. Don't forget that. The Bible has much to say about the Word of God. Psalm 33, 6, by the word of God were the heavens made. Psalm 33, 9, now this, this text blows my mind. And he spake, and it was what? That's a powerful fellow. We're talking about suns here and moons and stars. We're talking about grass and trees and, and elephants. Elephant, boom, there. <laughs> Bad fella. Bird, there, boom, bird, birds, birds. Let there be birds, birds everywhere. Instantly, that's, oh, man. And you think you can't trust him with that kind of power? driving through Colorado with my new bride, my wife. We just got married in California, driving to Mississippi. But we're going to stop in Ohio, so we're going through Colorado, and one of my tires goes out. And you know, with your, if you're with your bride, that's a time to show yourself to be a man. <laughs> yes, sir. Flat tire. Don't worry about it, sweetie. I got it. Pull on over. But I pulled over too far. 
didn't realize it. So when I start jacking the car up, the car leans on the jack. Well, I've never been a big man. I've always been strong enough, but not a big man. So I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to heave, you know, because the, the bride is standing there looking at me. Out in the middle of the car, out in the middle of the night. I'm the husband. I'm the head. Y'all read that book, didn't you? I'm the head. It's somewhere in the book. I'm the head. So I'm going to, and I can't. I'm talking about God can speak. All of us. Nobody. It's 2 o'clock in the morning out there in Colorado. It's back in the Back how old am I? Back in the 60s. Back in the 60s. Okay. All of a sudden, these lights appear. God. So I want you to know about God, how powerful he is. God, Phil, shows up driving a truck. How do you know he's God? I'm going to tell you in a minute. And a guy gets out, and God's dressed up in a big old hat, overalls. Young feller, God talks like that. Young feller, <laughs> looks like you got yourself a little mess on your hands, don't you? Love the way God talks. I said, well, I, I don't mind that. Just, just step back there. And he wants me to get some credit, so he says to me, we're going to push this thing together. Push. But man, I mean, I couldn't do anything. All of a sudden, that car rocked back up on that jack. See, God don't play. This is the sun maker. He speaks and it gets done. He just shoved me. <laughs> he said, now, it looked like you've been driving a while. Why don't you let me handle this for you? Now, you know, I'm dumb, but I ain't dumb. <laughs> I said, thank you, sir. Stood by my wife with my arm around her waist. See, I'm still the man. I'm the man. See, I'm the man. Got to be the man. Holding her tight, arm around the waist. While God fixes this flat. Let's it down. Got you. He starts right. Now, we're on a slope. It's about a two-mile slope. You ever been to Colorado? Long highway. There's no way for me not to see the car, Zisto. She wraps her arms around me and kisses me. Oh, honey, we're going to be just fine. And, you know, I'm still, you know, the kisses are fresh, so I'm, I'm caught up in that. <laughs> Brother can drive till hell freezes over. I'm just, <laughs> yeah. We turn to look. There's no truck, y'all. I don't care whether you believe it or not. There was no truck. No truck. See, he speaks. Come on, somebody. And it gets done. That's the kind of God we serve. So, so the word of the Lord is very powerful. And so Jesus got upset. Now, I'm, you don't realize this. I'm, I'm almost toward the end of the sermon. I never preach long. But I do preach good. So, 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 so in Matthew, Jesus, now being the word, having showed up, he says in John, I am the word, I'm the word, I became life. Jesus was very shocked when he got on the planet with all these church folk, these Pharisees, Pharisees, big time church people. They didn't know the Bible. Because he would say things and then he would respond to Matthew 22, 19, you err, you don't know the scriptures. He said that to the church folk. And then Matthew 21, 42, he gets so upset with them, he says, have you never read? Oh, there's a good question. Have you never read the Bible? Do you know, my brother, that some of the people I talk to who have the most questions about the Bible ain't never read it? <laughs> well, I don't understand it. It's too difficult. Well, you got calculus, didn't you? Did right. you take algebra? Right. Your brain works, doesn't it? Yeah. 
Read the Bible. Read it. Read it. And keep reading it. And Pathos, keep reading it. And don't stop reading it. It gets better and better each time. He said to them, you've never read? John 5.39, he said, search the scriptures. So question one, Genesis 3, 1, what if God said? That's the first question. Second question, remember? Remember the third, second, the second question? Thank you, somebody listened to me last week. Where are you? What position do you have on the word? And then the third question was, These people listen to me when I preach. It makes me feel good. Yeah, yeah. The third question was, who are you listening? If you're not listening to God, who are you listening to? When you got tied up with the drugs, who are you listening to? When you got pregnant out of wedlock, who are you listening to? It was a weak amen. I'll help him. Amen. When your marriage got in trouble and you went and did something you had no business, who were you listening to? That's the big question in life in these last days. Who are you got a mess in your life? Who were you listening to? Because the fourth question is going to nail you. The fourth question, and now, now, I'm down to the last stuff. The fourth question was, and that's in Genesis 3, verse 11. Let's go look at it. Put it up on the screen, Genesis 3, verse 11. Genesis 3, verse 11. He asked them the question. Now think about this question. No, did you eat from the tree? Now wait a minute. He's talking to two sentient beings who still got fruit dribbling down their chin. Did you, did you eat from the tree? Well, that's so obvious. See, why would God, Derek, ask the obvious? Listen to the pastor. Because there's a point in your life when God wants you to look directly at what you did. Confession, Pastor Chris, talks with calling it what it is. Not, not she lured me. I wanted to be lured. Not my bills were tight and I couldn't return my tithe. I put my bills before you, God. Call it what it is. The first step if you confess your sins, hallelujah, he is faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But God does not like liars on their knees. Tell it like it is. I was down, I wanted the drugs. I love the taste. Just tell, I love the taste of liquor. Just tell it like it is. He knows. He read your brain. He saw you doing it. He saw you making excuses to get to do it. So just when you come to God, folks, see, when you come to the pastor, paint it. When you come to God, tell it. Just tell it. And then the final question. Everybody read it. What's the difference between that question and the other one? Pastor Brian, the last question God is saying, have you considered the results? Just think, Pastor Smith, if Adam and Eve had considered the results, 
you and I wouldn't have any job. There would have never been a pastor or a church or a hospital or a morgue. It was Adam and Eve would have stood at that tree and they would have seen us blind and deaf and crippled and angry and poor and diseased. They would have said, I, we can't do that. We can't take those results. did it, he really didn't weigh the results. So there they stand, two great big people, buck naked, wearing leaves. The most intelligent human beings that ever lived on the planet, Adam and Eve. They didn't consider the results, and no wonder they boohooed like babies when Eve and Adam held the dead body of Abel in their arms. They did not see one son murdering another. They did not see Genesis 6 where the Bible says, now the thoughts of men had become evil continually. There was, there was, there was brutality within three chapters after the first. And they didn't see that. They didn't see leaves falling in fall. They did not see Palestinians and Hebrews fighting like animals killing one another's babies and trying to find some justice in it. The next time you get the guts to step over the line, ask yourself, have I considered, where's my lady? Yes. Have you considered the results? Well, Jesus did consider the results. And so before the first sin was committed, Jesus said, I'll die. He considered the results. And when they pray, I'll forgive. He considered the results. And when they get scared, I'll send angels. Or I'll come myself and fix the flat tire. I see the results. And I will not let Henry wear those results by himself. I will not let Henry stand in fear and doubt. I will be his savior. He considered the results. And so he came down and hung on a cross. And then he looked the devil in the face and he said, Checkmate. It is finished. Bow your heads. Pastor's done. Bow your heads. Five questions. What did I say? Second question. Do you have a physician on it, Henry? Fourth question, now Henry, let's talk. What did you do? Just call it like it is. And the fourth question, the fifth question. 
Henry, you didn't look at the results, did you? Did you? No, Lord, I didn't. Well, I knew you wouldn't, Henry. So after becoming a creator, I decided to be a savior. Hallelujah. So, Lord, now I pray for these who have listened. Some, some didn't pay attention at all. But some listened. They really listened. And it's for them that you gave me this word. And so, trusting in Jesus, our Savior, the Creator who became Savior, the Creator who recreates, the Creator who restores, the Creator who sustains. We come asking you to forgive us, to second chance us, or one thousandth <laughs> chance hear us. Save me from me. I am my worst enemy. Perhaps there's something going on in your life and you want to be sure that the prayer covers you. Just raise your hand right now. Get your hand up in the air. Mine went up first. Lord, just help me. The human race, put your hand down, is still wrestling with those first five questions. Help me to be honest, to be true, to be sure, and to grow from my foolishness into a fit vessel for the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name.